welcome back to the lab and today we will do something absolutely incredible and it will blow your mind what we are about to do is we will build a variable frequency PWM generator now not only I will do that I will also show you how it works and what parts will you need for this project so let's get right into the video now before we go into the video I just want to advertise one of my videos of course so it's a table lamp I made it's a LED table lamp that is using this exact circuit in a little bit different way so super cool click on it somewhere on screen check it out I think you're gonna love it and it will blow your mind as well all right so let's start first things first then again this is not book so we got a ZVS we got a square wave salt tooth oscillator and boom oh there we go all right guys now before we go into the basics of how the circuit is operating i just want to show you the data sheet to actually show you what you should expect from this device so as you can see uh, we have uh, our power ratings so this on the single supply it can take uh, 3 to 32 volts uh, DC and then on dual uh, power supply you can uh, power it from plus minus uh, 1.5 volts and plus minus uh, 16 volts which essentially is the same thing and it can operate up to 0.7 megahertz which is equivalent to 700 kilohertz and yeah that's about all you want to know on this page so unfortunately uh, this PDF sucks because this is a four paper and the thing is so small you guys can see it but the output currents uh, typical output currents at uh, 25 Celsius is about 30 milliamps so we should expect about 30 milliamps of output current from our op amp which is good enough uh, to turn on a transistor or a gate driver to actually uh, drive a power transistor so that is good to make this video as short as possible I will try to leave you know the schematic for you to try because it does work I tried it many times uh, it includes my own modifications to make it work and it works all the time every time no problem now to make this video shorter I will not go into big de detail how the op amps are operating I will just go over general um, generally how they are working so pretty much uh, what you have here in this part is you have your oscillator so your oscillator uh, you change the frequency with this capacitor okay and also uh, you change uh, the frequency with this 10k capacitor so what this gives you is it gives you the ability to change your PWM frequency which I will talk about in a second because it's a very frustrating moment of my life so then uh, the saw tooth wave is coming into this guy so what we are doing here is this is a comparator it compares two voltages so essentially 
uh, you set the voltage with this potentiometer and we have a buffer here which gives us again 30 milliamps or so of current to here we don't really need a buffer anyway because theoretically uh, no current can go into the inputs of the op amp anyway but in real life there's a tiny tiny little bit of current and it's nothing like it's microamps it's even less than that so uh, we don't really need this buffer here but since we have to use another chip anyway I decided hey why not so I'm using this chip as a buffer and this chip as a can chip and this op amp as a comparator therefore it's comparing uh, two voltages if this voltage is lower than this voltage uh, what happens is essentially output goes low but if this voltage is higher than this one it goes high therefore when we get a saw to the wave like that you set your voltage like that you change the amount of time it's on and off therefore you get PWM and we actually get a full control with this circuit you set your frequency here to whatever you want and then you set your duty cycle anywhere from 0 to 100 percent how much you want so we have a full control over the thing now in real life you would not want uh, 0 or 100 you would want something uh, in between since it can turn on your transistor all the way and it can cause trouble if you're driving a motor it's a good thing to have 100% and 0% but if you're doing a boost converter with this circuit that can cause you some trouble since you cause a short in your circuit and potentially blow up some components so yeah all right guys so what we're about to do right now is i have all the components laid out here uh, nothing fancy we have two OM35A chips we have two uh, 47k resistors we have one 10k resistor one 100k resistor we have 56k uh, resistor and a 10k potentiometer and we have a whole bunch of capacitors here uh, we're just going to try different capacitors to achieve different frequencies and that's pretty much it uh, what you need for uh, this project so let's start Alright guys, I finally got the circuit working and it was really frustrating when you forget one jumper and you spend half an hour trying to figure out where you went wrong, but that's over. <laughs> so now I have it hooked up to my oscilloscope as you can see. Uh, before I show you the screen, I will hook up this buzzer to the output. So we have 30 mi milliamps of output that should be enough to drive the buzzer as you can see it is running now we have two caps one is right here at the moment and then we have this one which is a bigger capacity which will result to lower frequency so I'm going to take that one out now it went supersonic um, it's really unstable and as you can see 
it's much lower frequency now about I don't know 55 or 50 Hertz so the reason why I'm showing uh, these caps to you right now is because I will be switching them on the go when I show you the oscilloscope all right guys this is the moment of truth to actually explain how all of this is operating so really simple uh, we have two channels hooked up to our two channel 20 megahertz scope uh, each channel is set to 5 volts per division uh, we also are set to 0.1 microseconds per division so convert it to hertz I don't know uh, not now <laughs> because I want to show you something else uh, the way the circuit is working is as I said we have a buffer in the circuit which sets uh, the voltage which inputs it into one of the inputs of the comparator which compares two voltages and this is the way it's working so we have a saw uh, wave triangular wave right coming out from our capacitor uh, which is connected to our oscillator so essentially we are shifting uh, actually let me show channel 2 only and let me go like that so now oh, you guys love it so now as you can see we have a big um, triangular wave and uh, imagine this this is our comparator voltage on the one of the inputs imagine we can shift that back and forth with a pinch order like that now the way uh, it works is uh, the comparator is comparing two voltages uh, here and here so it compares this voltage to the voltage that's coming from the triangular wave so let's say it's set to this point we have zero duty cycle once we go here boom you see we have on pulse here and on pulse here but it's really small so we set the bar even lower now uh, the on time is from here to here and on and on and on on that side so we set it even lower now our on time is even larger okay so now we set it like that it's below therefore it's always on 100% duty cycle so this is how the circuit is working so now I will show you both of the channels at the same time and oops I actually have to uh, set this channel back to zero so you guys could actually see it um, yeah just like so so now imagine because uh, you do have to imagine since I do not have a third channel on my scope to show you the voltage but if I could uh, you would see that so uh, now I will move the potentiometer as you can see it's a 20 turn potentiometer uh, okay. it's a 20 turn potentiometer so it will take some time to as you can see, we're shifting that uh, voltage on uh, one of the inputs of the comparator and it outputs us a duty cycle. So we are just about on the peak of that triangle. Oh, why is it flashing? I, I don't like it. There we go. So we are right on the peak of that triangle right now and as you can see 
You see it's falling down. So we are right on the peak of that triangle. And now we're going lower and lower and lower. Okay. Until we go all the way down. Okay, go all the way down. All the way down. And boom. Now it's 100% duty cycle. Oh, I know why. Because we're triggering on. We were triggering on channel 1, which is our PWM. That's why we were getting weird uh, things on the screen. But as you can see, works a treat. So that's about it for this video. If you like the video, you know what to do. Hit that like button down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so we will know when a new video comes out. I'm really, really, really begging you to subscribe. I, I really need to know that you guys like my content and you, you support me. It helps a lot. And if I did something wrong or I said something wrong, feel free to write it in the, in the comments. I'll do my best, you know, to make better content next time. Yeah, thank you for watching, and see you next time.